disease that has infiltrated the Muslim community. This disease of victim mentality. You tell me one day the Prophet was a victim. He blamed God. He was never a victim. He said, you don't blame anyone, blame the Creator. Yeah? He, he, and he, he would blame himself rather than blaming others. He would empower his community via the concept of the oneness of God. What does God say? La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. There is no true power apart from the power of God. Which means all of these things that you blame don't really have any true power. The language of victim love is such a distant power. And we have organizations exist in this country, not to mention some names, but some of them were Sky News recently, <coughs> that blame, blame other people all the time. I've had enough of this. It's crazy. It's crazy. Oh, I'm sorry. And that's right. Be your values. I'm telling you. Why is it that I, I became Muslim 10 years ago? But I think my dad and my family are more Muslim than some Muslims. And they're not even Muslim. You know, my dad is so happy watching my YouTube clips, yeah? Because I was talking about my dad, yeah? He was a hero to me. He has so many amazing values and this and this and all. Very Islamic. And I said to my dad, you know, the things that you go through is what our pious predecessors went through and what they did. And, and we don't even have that. We don't have that. We still argue with each other. Don't get me wrong, there's a lot of care, there's a lot of goodness in our community, yeah? Lots of goodness, yeah? But the reason I'm highlighting this, not too, like, we, I'm not, like, you know, self hated I'm not. But we need to wake up and smell the coffee. You want change, you just have to be the change. By the way, Gandhi never said that. You know? I don't know why, actually, he's, I never ever said that. Gandhi never said that. But anyway, if you want change, you have to be that change. So you want compassion, you have to enroll people in your behavior. I mean, so many brothers and sisters, especially in Asian communities, my dad doesn't love me, my mom thinks I'm being fat, and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you know what, yeah? And I'm like, I'm so happy I have my own parents. I'm so happy I have my own parents. My dad still, still says to me, he loves me every day. And we should be like that. The Prophet said, if you love someone, you should tell him. You should tell him. I'm telling you, the sister, ask yourself, who the last time your dad said he loves you? Some of you be like, 13 years ago. Yeah? <laughs> Honestly, it doesn't exist. The word love doesn't exist at home. And that's why we're being almost cursed from this perspective. We need to enroll ourselves in this behavior of, or Ibn Qayyim said, where you see Rahmah, where you see mercy, you should see Islam. So your home should be like that. It's no point being an activist on the street, creating a legacy for yourself around the world, and you know, say, yeah, I'm Mr. Islam, man. Da, 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 da. Yeah? And then you can't even deal with your own wife, cook with your own children, or you don't even smile at your mom. When was the last time you massaged your mom's feet? When was the last time you did that? When was the last time you bore a gift? When was the last time you spoke to your neighbor? When was the last time you smiled? Some of us don't even smile, man. When was the last time we said to our own fellow brother, I love you? And really meant it. Not like, ah, you know when we say, Muslims say salam? We say, salam alaikum, yeah? How do we do it now? So, 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 or with our text, it's abbreviated to SLM. Yeah? It's going to be a hybrid between hello and salam. Salam, yeah? There's no meaning in even our language anymore, yeah? And bring meaning back to the way we speak, the way we interact with one another. I'm telling you something, yeah? I think it was Boxing Day, yeah? Oh, it was Christmas Day, actually. We were in KFC. No, it was Boxing Day. KFC, yeah? And we were in the big one in Marble Arch. It was packed, full of consumers, yeah? <laughs> and there was this old black lady, yeah? She pushed in. And the queue of thinning was so long. And I'm impatient with small things. I'm patient with big things. Uh, like my dad's like that. Very impatient with small things, but patient with big things, yeah? But with small things, like waiting for food, I'm like, yeah, okay, really big, yeah, very place. So she, I was like, she's cute, she pushes in, yeah? And I'm like, what do I do? And she, I had to see, she looked tired, she looked lonely, she was dragging this bag. Anyway, what happened was, she, she ordered food, and I said, you know what? Said, Sorry, ma'am, let me pay that for you. Do you know what she said to me? I said, why do you do that for? I broke my heart. Why do we live in a society where she has to say why? If you do that every day for your life, you can change your world. That's what comes with Oxford University study on racism. Oxford University study on racism, and it, and it was in an anti racist campaigning group, and they did a test. On the computer screen, it would be white, black, yellow faces, positive word, negative word. They would time 
how you took for them now to go to the positive word. Anti-racist campaign group. And all of them took slower for the positive word when it became a non-white face. They were in a close shot. But one guy came in very late in the morning, he redone the test. They redone the test many times, there was a positive correlation. He redone the test and it was positive, same timing. And I said, why, why, what happened? He spent the whole evening watching the American Olympics, watching the black runners run for Britain. And the conclusion of the study was, if you have a positive interaction with another human being, forget intellectual gymnastics, it's bullcrap. So don't underestimate just your fellow human being. Trust me, do it. When I was even a kid, before I was Muslim, I was on the bus. Old granny, she was on the bus, because that is her trip. That's her day trip. She goes on number 38 from Rosemary Avenue and goes all the way around. She's an old woman. And she, I had a beard at that time. I said, you're having a whole day, you know? Yeah? Talk to people like that. Say something. Enroll people in your behavior, isn't it? People need that. Trust me, you'll be so shocked. Do it. They think you're mad for a while. Then you'll be happy in your own madness. You'd be happy, you, you, you wouldn't care. Like me, I don't care what I say now. I used to when before. You could check out my old YouTube clips. I used to be someone with somebody else. I used to copy another professor, yeah, and style. Yeah. Now I'm just me. I don't care. And you'd be happy with yourself. And not just that, you'd enroll people in your behavior. Do it. You want compassion? Then you have to be compassionate. You want, you want friendliness? You'd be friendly. You want that change, bro? You'd be that change. Trust me, if we don't get that from this, Point, I don't know why we're talking about Islamic State taking over the world. I'm telling you, that will never, never happen Islamically. Because God says, if you believe in the good deeds, then He will make a situation of one that you were in fear and insecurity to that of peace. But just believe in the good deeds, of course. But it's such a hard thing to do for some of us. Even for me, by the way, I'm not saying I'm not perfect at all. And you know how I realized this? I went to a non Muslim psychological course for four days. Do you know that? And it woke me up to my own tradition. Just like yourself, sister. So we learn from each other. As the Prophet Muhammad said, the Prophet be peace, wisdom is the possession of the believer. Where he finds it, he just take it. So yeah, be that change. Uh, it's very powerful. And once you do that, then we could talk about the rest, I think. Because you know why? The Sahaba, the Prophet's companions, I'm not making the last point, I'm sorry, bro, yeah? The Prophet's companions, who they were like a people, like a village from Odin, after one book, the Quran, they took over the whole, the one third of the world and established relative peace and justice, okay? How did they do that? You think it was a certain, like, you know, political process to this stage and that stage? Yeah, that's like, that's a presuppositionist viewpoint, yeah? You have your own assumptions and you're superimposing it on the reality. It was simply because they lived the message. Abu Bakr was the first caliph of Islam. Every morning, do you know what he would do? He would go to a blind Jewish woman's house, milk her goats, and clean the carpets when he was the leader of the Muslims. He was the caliph. Where's David Cameron? Does he go to a very next door and make a cup of tea? But honestly, these people lived their message. They lived it. And that's why God brought them this mercy and this, and this, and, and, and this reality. Just like the Islamic scholars say, God would give the succession to non-Muslims if they have these principles and are just. And we've seen this. It doesn't, it's not rocket science. Anyway, sorry for the rant. May God bless you. No, you came in late, so it's out of context. Assalamu <laughs> alaikum, guys. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much.